Be praised, my Lord, for our brother wind and air and every kind of weather by which you, Lord, uphold life in all your creatures. Today we're going to talk, or I'm going to talk a little bit about wind and breath. In the beginning, the Spirit of the Lord hovered over creation. Spirit, Roha, can also be translated wind and breath. So depending on the passage you're reading, Sure. They will choose one of those words in the Old Testament in the Hebrew language to express the feeling. So at the beginning, the spirit hovered over chaos. What does it mean if we instead breath? At the beginning, breath hovered over chaos. The next time the word appears is in the second chapter. When God breathes life into the dirt, creating humanity. Yes. The very essence of life. Did you know that the Hebrew word for God is actually meant to reflect breath. That when you say the word Yahweh, you breathe in on Yah and out on Way. That it's an actual breath that you're taking and saying the name of God. Yahweh. Breath. The very essence of who it says God is, breath. Something that if we do not do, we cannot survive. Another story. Another breath. The story is told in the book of Acts that on the last day that Jesus is with the disciples, on the very last day when he enters into the room where the disciples are, He breathes on them the spirit. Now, it's a different word here because now we're in the New Testament and we're in Greek. But it's that same feeling. What Jesus gives to the disciples is his very breath. He breathes on them and therefore they can breathe on us, sharing that very breath of God. And then what happens? The day of Pentecost arrives and the wind blows through the people, sharing the breath of God. Breath. It's something that we think a lot about now. After we watched George Floyd have that cop's knee on his neck and said, I can't breathe. All of us have thought a lot more about breath, about what it means to be able to breathe in the very air we need for life. As I was researching air and churches, trying to find an example to share, I came up with nothing, by the way. Apparently, don't work on saving the environment and the air. But what I came across are stories about environmental justice. In Louisiana, there is a section of river that runs from Baton Rouge down to New Orleans. And along that river, it used to be very complicated being full of plantations. But when the plantations were overthrown, the people who were forced, enslaved, and worked on that land were given pieces of property in which they made their homes. 
So generations of living on those pieces of land. But then Louisiana decided that they would be the mecca of petroleum production in the United States. Meaning that they don't necessarily, but they do because they take it out of the ground, but they process it. And so all along that stretch of river, what used to be these beautiful houses and the beautiful trees is now dotted with factory after factory after factory. In fact, one of the parishes changed their seal, which used to just show the plantation, to show a plantation with a line of factories running behind it. So in Louisiana, they opened up for business and decided that they would let anybody and everybody come. And so that section of river is what we call Cancer Alley. That it's become a place where people who live, who have lived there for generations, now experience a suffering at the hand of all that industry that has come in. Because the controls over pollution have not been as strong as they could be. And here's the thing. When we go to build factories, we choose the spot in any city. It doesn't matter what city you go to. Any city, the poorest section to place it in. And so in St. James Parish, in this last year, they decided that they would let in a plastic plant. And the EPA told them how much pollution you could throw up into the air and be safe. But if you're placing a plastic plant in an area that is over polluted already, the amount of pollution one factory can make is, is exponentially worse because every other factory in that line is letting off the same amount of pollution. And what the people talk about is how hard it is to breathe. How hard it is to do that very thing that we need to draw life. How hard it is to breathe in air and feel, feel that presence of God, that breath of Yahweh. One of the women who I read about in this article said when her family comes to visit, when her family comes, they always leave with headaches and rashes. She says that her grandchildren are no longer allowed to play outside because they can't breathe. One of our calls is to remember, remember that God is the very breath we breathe, that God's spirit and wind blows in and among us and around us, that God's breath is what keeps us alive. And we're invited, we're invited to make sure other people have that ability to breathe. That's why one of the things I love about the United Church of Christ is we were the very first people to do a study that proved the connection between citing toxic plants, air polluting factories, and the communities they were placed in of black and brown bodies. That we were the very people that made that connection and called it environmental justice and said, this, this is wrong and needs to change. As we read our scripture today from Job, what this passage continues to is that God is present. 
Although I will give you a little side note that the word for wind in this passage is not ruach. Go figure, right? It is actually a word that means east wind. But in this scripture, what it talks about is how God is there in the very way the world and all of creation has been formed. That God is in the places that seem so far away. That God is in the places of hope and joy and beauty. And God is also in the places of darkness and despair. That God is there in all those places. As I was doing research, I came across this story from the Filipino tradition that I think illustrates this scripture. They have a parable that they tell. Resilience. And it's about a mango tree and a bamboo tree. And the mango tree is you know, very solid and sturdy. And they wanted to argue, the mango and the bamboo tree, about who was the strongest and who could survive. And so they decided the way to test who was the most resilient and who was the strongest was to invite the wind to come and try to blow them down. And so the mango tree in all its beauty and glory and strength, stood firm and strong as the wind came. And it survived as the wind got stronger and stronger until the wind was so strong, it knocked its over and its roots came up. Well, the bamboo tree had a different way of surviving the wind. It decided that the way you survive the wind is to blow with the wind, to bend as the wind comes, to go in the place that the wind pushes you. And so the wind came and got stronger and the bamboo bent. The wind got stronger and stronger and the bamboo danced. The bamboo stayed upright. Now this story is told as a way of telling us that we can be like that bamboo. That in those places of despair and darkness and hurt, like it's described in our passage, where it talks about violence, where it talks about death, where it talks about the forgiveness that should be sought. In fact, it has this great like there's this great line where it talks about how the dawn will gather up her skirts and shake out those who need to face God and hear what God has to say to them. In those times, in those times of despair and hopelessness, in those times of hardness, so in the Filipino tradition, this passage helps you to get through all the waves of colonialism that happened, right? Like it wasn't just us being there now. It was consecutive groups of people that had washed over the islands. It was consecutive groups of people who had control. And this, this story tells you that you can bend but you will not break, that you can survive that wind that blows, however hard it is. We, we can survive that hardness, that darkness, that despair that is in our lives. Because God is there with us in the very breath we breathe. When you're in that place of despair, when you're in that place of pain and hurt, the breath of God is with you. And that breath, going back to that breath, 
going back to your breath is one of the things that helps you to center and relax, to remind yourself that you're still here. And now that you know that if you say Yahweh, if you say God's name, you are praying and breathing that the air, the wind, the spirit of God is moving with you in all those places. That you are strong enough to withstand whatever comes. Amen.